Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and we're currently flying through our galaxy the Milky Way toward the most important object to us. This object, if you haven't guessed from the title of this video yet, is the Sun. In today's video we're going to be talking about our beautiful star close to us and we're actually going to discuss the mysteries of this object and in the next video we're going to talk about the facts that we already know. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now, despite this being an object that we kind of take for granted every day, Sunny is actually the most important thing that happened to humanity. Mostly because we base our cultural beliefs, we base our religious beliefs, and we base other beliefs on it as well. If you actually really think about it, almost every culture, if not every culture in the world, places the sun in the center of their belief system. And so for the entire humanity, including of course you and me, Sunny is the most important thing out there. And so today we're going to talk about the mysteries of the sun, things that we haven't really solved yet and things we don't really understand about uh, this beautiful and incredible object and things that might actually influence our future as well. So let's start with the first mystery. And let's actually talk about all of this using this simulation right here known as stellar evolution of our sun. Now, we actually know quite a lot about our sun. We know um, pretty much exactly what's going to happen to it in a few billion years. Uh, we also know um, how it will change, how it will lose mass, how it will actually expand, and then possibly become a white dwarf. All of this is sort of scientific facts that we've discovered uh, based on other stars that are similar to our sun. And by the way, there's actually not that many stars that are similar to, to our sun because most of the stars in our galaxy are actually uh, smaller red dwarfs. But the few mysteries that remain are actually also very, very important. So for example, one of the mysteries of the sun is why is it that Approximately every 11 years, which I'm, I'm going to try to simulate here, so right now it's 2014, uh, and so we're going to go into 2025. Every 11 years, the sun goes through a kind of a cycle of activity. And specifically, the activity I'm referring to is the so-called uh, solar flares and the sunspots that you can kind of see on the surface there. So every 11 years or so, the sun uh, goes through a cycle of high activity and basically a lot of sunspots and low activity when there's almost no uh, sunspots and at the same time almost no sun flares or solar flares. It's still unknown to us why this is happening. We understand why solar flares occur, we understand why the sunspots occur, but we don't really understand why this cycle actually exists. And so for the past few years, scientists have actually been trying to predict these cycles because they do affect our planet Earth quite a lot. So whenever there is a lot of solar flares, um, obviously the activity related to the magnetosphere of our planet increases. And so we'll see a lot of um, uh, northern and southern lights. We'll see a lot of various uh, highly charged particles coming our way. And uh, this, of course, affects uh, things on our planet, including various electromagnetic devices, including, of course, satellites that we depend on uh, in modern society. And so every 11 years, this changes. So we need to figure out why this is happening so we can actually maybe predict it better. Now, another mystery about the sun is the actual uh, surface of the sun versus the area around it, also known as the solar corona. Now, you don't really see the corona here, but here's actually the picture of what it looks like. But essentially, the surface of the sun, as you can see right around here, is approximately 5,500 degrees Celsius or um, 5,775 degrees Kelvin. Now, here's the thing. If you actually go around here in this area known as the corona, it's about 200 times higher. So it's approximately... 2 million degrees Kelvin, which I can't even enter here because it's such a big number, but this area is ridiculously hot. So even if you were to survive somehow on the surface of the sun, you would definitely melt and disintegrate if you were in a corona region. We have no idea why this is happening. It's been, uh, there's been several propositions and it's been studied for a very long time, but the fact that the corona is so extremely hot is still a mystery to us. One of the explanations um, is in regards to to the magnetic field, which unfortunately you don't really see here because it's the star, uh, but here's the axis of the magnetic field. 
And be because of the interaction um, of magnetic field and magnetic lines with the outside part of the sun, we think that maybe somehow this causes some of the superheated particles to um, aggregate right around the sun and making it basically ridiculously hard. So several million degrees hot. So the center of the sun is approximately 15 million degrees Celsius, but this area right here is about two to three million degrees, which is not far off. Whereas the surface here is only about 5,000. There's a huge, huge difference and we don't know why. Another mystery is the so-called Maunder Minimum. Now this actually refers to a very, very unusual solar cycle that um, have occurred uh, something like three to 400 years ago. Specifically here, we're talking about 1645 to 1715, when surprisingly a very, very low activity was on the surface of the sun for about 70 years. For those 70 years, the astronomers observed very few hot spots, um, very few dark spots that is, and very few solar flares. And uh, here's actually one of the um, dark spots right, here, right now, which is awesome. This was completely random, but it actually occurred. But there were so few of them in uh, between 1645 that 1710 that the scientists could not really explain why. Ironically, same period in time on Earth was actually also known as the mini ice age. As a matter of fact, in those 70 years, the earth was a lot colder on average and had a lot more snow, a lot more um, essentially cold winters than it does on average. And this of course resulted in a lot of famine, a lot of problems with agriculture, and many people did die during that period. But it was never really explained and the, the few hypotheses that we have today are not really clear on, on what exactly happened. But it's very, very likely that this Maunder Minimum, this cycle of 70 years, um, something like 300, 400 years ago, may have actually caused this. And uh, modern scientists, uh, specifically some of the scientists from uh, my hometown of Montreal, uh, actually have studied this in a little bit more detail and think that this actually happens about 5% of the time. Essentially, um, about 5% of the entire sun life uh, is spent in very quiet activity. And so it's kind of likely that maybe in the next 10,000 years or so, it might happen again or possibly even sooner. But if it does happen, we're in a lot of trouble because it would actually cause another miniature ice age, which would cause our planet to be really, really cold and obviously cause a lot of trouble on our planet because our agriculture has become a lot more well-developed and requires the solar energy to survive. And of course, I can't really not mention the fact that uh, some scientists today think that uh, the climate change that we're experiencing right now may also be related to the solar activity. But uh, the thing is, NASA hasn't really found any changes in solar flares in the last few years. So I don't really think it's related to Maunder minimum that I've just talked about. It's possibly something to do with the fact that we are really releasing too much CO2 into the atmosphere and are basically causing these changes ourselves. And one of the last mysteries I'm going to talk about is actually in regards to Sun being a relatively quiet star. Even though I just talked about all of these changes that the Sun is undergoing, you'd be surprised how many more changes other stars have. So here's Proxima Centauri. It's a much smaller, much less uh, interesting star. Obviously, it's the closest neighbor that has a north like planet, but I'm going to place it here and we're going to compare them. This star is ridiculously more active than the Sun. And the scientists today have no idea why is it that the sun is so much more quiet, so much more well behaved than pretty much most of the stars in uh, in our galaxy. A lot of the other stars are a lot more active and they have a lot more solar flares, they have a lot more things going on and some of them actually change dramatically um, even as short as a few years. And here's actually a beautiful flare that you've just observed from Proxima Centauri. Our sun will not have this for quite a while. Uh, Proxima Centauri obviously gets a lot more of these flares because it's a lot more active. So the scientists today have no idea why the sun is so well behaved, but uh, most of them are basically agreed that one of the reasons our planet was able to actually evolve life and succeed in having life for over 3 billion years is because our sun is so much more mild and so much more well behaved than pretty much most of the other stars that you see right here. All of these other stars have so much activity that they would probably eliminate any um, sources of life within a few years. Whereas our sun is kind of nice and it's kind of one of the reasons why life has not only evolved on planet Earth, but has been able to successfully evolve for several billion years, leading to basically us, which is really a very unlikely thing to happen, at least in terms of mathematics and probability. But anyway, 
And that's really all I wanted to mention in this particular video. I kind of wanted to talk about uh, these three very, really, really interesting mysteries of our beautiful uh, star. And in the next video, we're going to actually talk about the facts that we currently know about the sun because we have studied it probably more than any other object, um, except for, of course, for a planet Earth. And the um, sun is ridiculously important to us, so we need to understand it more and better if we actually want to become interstellar species and one day move to another star and live there as well. And so hopefully you learned uh, how amazing Sunny actually is and how mysterious it is as well. And, and so in the next video, we're going to discuss this in more detail and also talk about other things that we currently know. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone that you think might enjoy learning from video games and just want to learn about space, sciences and math and so on. And we're also going to discuss a lot of the other topics that uh, include things like finances investment and of course uh, coding and programming using video games and don't forget you can actually support this channel on patreon and you can uh, help me purchase better equipment so i can make better videos and don't forget that one of the best ways to contact me is either through facebook or twitter and you can definitely reach me there within seconds because i always check that youtube however takes me a while to catch up on all of the comments that i usually get thank you so much for all your support guys i love you so much game you later and as always bye bye and let's actually see if Earth warms up, because now we have two stars that we're orbiting, one of them being Proxima Centauri and one of them being the Sun. And it looks like it is getting warmer and warmer. So how long will it take for us to actually live in the system that becomes ridiculously hot and kills all life on our planet? And look at that, it didn't take very long. It actually is already an Earth without life, because it has now basically become... Um, Really, 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 really hot. And as Earth approaches, the closest uh, point in the, its orbit, close to these dual stars, also known as uh, the periapsis of its orbit, look at what happens. Everything disappears, water is gone, life is gone, Earth has become an empty shell of its former self. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.